Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott, and today I wanted to try to do an episode on the Law of One. The Law of One is a very interesting subject. You have heard me recently mention it in an interview with Aaron Abke, and I also talked a little bit with Tom Douse. And so I just wanted to try to do an episode on it. And even though things like reality transurfing are pretty complicated, the law of one is incredibly complicated and difficult to explain. And so I just wanted to try to kind of give you an explanation of it so that you can understand it. The best place to start is I would look at a playlist by Aaron Abke. He has about five videos on it. He does a terrific job of explaining it. And I'd like to discuss some of these concepts and you can understand I include some of this stuff in my meditations and it may resonate a little bit more if you understand where it's coming from. It's, it's really exciting. You have to ask yourself if things like this are true. It's interesting. When I asked Aaron Abke about channeling, he said there's, you know, several different kinds of channeling. You can be channeling while you're awake, like Esther Hicks. And in like Oprah, if you watched that recent interview that I had. But then there is also a form of channeling that is occurs where, where they're completely out. They're in a form of deep trance where they're laying in bed. Uh, there's been experiments with channeling that go all the way back in different occult sciences. They've been experimenting. Different research institutes started experimenting in the 80s. And so it's interesting because there's... Uh, this particular work is the the background behind the law of one and the way it was channeled and the and the material in it is something that is fun and interesting to consider and there is something about this information that resonates and what's very interesting is that in my interview with Frederick Dotson who is the one person who I thought had read this. Because if you go and read Frederick Dotson's books, he has levels of energy. He he talks about levels of consciousness and densities. He has a book called Pleiades and Our Secret Destiny. He has a book on Atlantis. All of these things are discussed in The Law of One. And he had never read The Law of One. And everything in his books talks about The Law of One. Independent Confirmation of this information can also be seen in channeled works. I was reading a channeled work by an ascended master. Dion fortune had uh, channeled an ascended master in a book called the cosmic doctrine. And this book is similar, but even more complicated. The language used is goes way over my head. And the language used in this particular book is doctoral level metaphysics the deepest kind of metaphysics in the description of the universe given by this channeled entity who calls him or herself Ra. The information is completely mind-blowing if it's true and if it's not true, which is interesting because there is a point in time when they ask the channeled entity about other channel works and its authenticity. And there is... No way that I could cover all of the information that you need to know about the Law of One in a single episode. I was going to try to give you some highlights on on some of the stuff that I've learned. But you can listen to a complete recording of every single session that was channeled. They recorded it with multiple microphones and they dictated it and it's all indexed out and it's for free and you can read a pdf of all of the conversations that were done with this channel work on the law of one dot info but the you know the real question when we talk about this stuff is a lot of different questions i mean have you ever really sat back and thought about what kind of universe that we're in have you really ever looked out into space And just wanted to know what what it all meant. Haven't you ever done that? When I went through a phase in my life of 15 years of just reading every kind of science fiction novel 
because of a deep desire within me to know, to understand what is happening in this vast universe that is all around us. It blows me away when I look at all of the different stars and planets and you just think about it. it's incredible the trillions of stars and the possibility that each star could have multiple planets with life on it as we're starting to look at our own solar system imagine our solar system is mirrored in every one with varieties in every single one imagine the diverse infinity that is all around us and what it means. What does it mean? What is our place in this universe and why are we here and what is all of that? Is it all just random? Because it doesn't look like it, does it? There's order within all of this randomness. There's some kind of force that balances all of these different elements into stars and planets and galaxies and black holes. And what does it all mean? What does it all mean? I mean, do you wonder about alien life and what there is out there? Do you think that we've been visited by aliens? I mean, certainly there is a real chance that we, that we are alone in this universe. When we're looking out into the universe, why is it we haven't seen anything? We talk about Fermi's paradox and we say, if, there, if, if the universe is teeming with this abundant life, then why aren't we seeing it? And this work even answers that question. And so it's profound work, the kind of work that when I read it, I felt like I already knew it. I've had this happen a couple of times, similar to when I read the Bible or reality transurfing or other incredible books that really hit you. So to give you a little bit of background so you can understand, and this has been explained in those other videos, but... The Law of One, also known as the Raw Material, is a series of five philosophical monographs published between 1982 and 1998 by Schiffer Books. The books purportedly were authored by a non-human intelligence named Ra through the process of channeling, in which Don Elkins acted as the questioner, Jim McClarty as the scribe, and Carla Ruckert as the channel. For Ra. The five book series presents both commentary and full transcripts of the dialogue between the questioner and Ra, who is described as an entity composed of an entire civilization of extraterrestrial beings that are fused into one unified consciousness, referred to as a social memory complex. And we'll get to that in a second. But the introduction to the first book explains that the questioner is Don Elkins and that Ra is, is a higher density being, a sixth density life form of pure energy, spirit, speaking through the body of channeler Carla Rucker. You can listen to all of this material on the law of one dot info. Carla Ruckert transmitted the material by entering into a non-conscious state. She's out, which the authors call an unconscious trance, where she became a communication channel or instrument for Ra to utilize in order for them to communicate to our level of reality and answer the questions posed by Don Elkins. The answers were interpreted to be direct communications with Ra, which is in line with standard views on channeling. The books are written in a question and answer format. The dialogue between Don Elkins and Ra was recorded, transcribed, and edited by Jim McClarty to produce the five books. The material in the books conveys an elaborate and grand, mind-blowing reality, ultimately described as being called the Law of One. Or the basic principle that all is one. That all things that exist are ultimately the same essence within many forms and configurations. That we are one thought. The philosophy of the law of one describes the big questions of life. Why? How? 
and where everything that exists comes from, as well as its place within the manifest creation. The five books explain and explore this premise in relation to many aspects of life, including philosophy, religion, spirituality, cosmology, anthropology, history, politics, physics, biology, geology, and the paranormal. The dialogues have been cited by sociologists to be a convergence of ufology and trance channeling, where a human channeler is said to be aligned with or in harmony with Ra, thus being able to act as a receiver for the vibrations. In this case, knowledge emitted by the sixth density intelligence. The material describes that Ra is a highly advanced race of extraterrestrials who once visited ancient Egypt and assisted with construction of pyramids. In these books, Don Elkins, a PhD physicist, university professor an airline pilot found the apex of his lifetime of research into the ufo phenomenon through telepathic contact with extraterrestrial intelligence so for 20 years he had been working with various gifted individuals who would go into trance and speak on behalf of these higher intelligence and time after time dr elkins would ask them the most difficult challenging questions coming from the forefront of his research into advanced physics and he would get the answers these answers were repeatedly coming from those who had no knowledge of these things while awake it was at that end at the end of the 20 year period that elkins worked with carla ruckert broke through to a much more substantial level this breakthrough was directly precipitated by the arrival of jim mcclarty who thought that he was coming to help don and carla catalog categorize and organize the volumes of material that they had already produced instead something totally unexpected happened they attracted a true true heavy hitter of the higher realms perhaps the main group responsible for our planet's care a huge spiritual group of entities much like abraham that called itself raw and said that they were from the sixth density level of spiritual evolution millions upon millions of years more advanced than than modern humanity as soon as Ra began speaking they made it clear that this was the first time they had been able to get through an undistorted message or series of messages in thousands of years of human history the words and concepts are highly sophisticated and precise unlike any other type of channeled material i've ever seen and were referred to by one professor as akin to PhD dissertation on epistemology. The book series articulates a non-dualistic philosophy according to which all things both spring from and are one with the source of the universe termed the one infinite creator. And within the law of one the creator is not described as an external entity as earthly religious texts present in order for men to understand. Instead, the creator is rather an all-pervasive intelligent energy that is both within everything that exists and without thus the indivisible oneness that the philosophy describes underlying the perception of separation utilized for learning is an indivisible oneness the law of one states that this universe one of is one of many was created by the one infinite creator out of itself by distorting its energy into the parts of existence called distortions the process occurred one distortion at a time in a specific order the first distortion created by the creator is called free will and the second is love and the third is light all other substance and form comes from an interaction of these three distortions akin to a hologram or a fractal each part of the creation is also the whole keep an eye out i have an interview coming up with jude curvan who wrote, writes a book about the cosmic hologram and the more we're starting to look at the universe as being a hologram the more this confirms what we know about the law of one as raw uses the word the distortion of light can be taken to mean energy slash matter and knowledge slash wisdom ra describes each galaxy 
as creation of an intelligence called a Logos. And the idea of the Logos is so mind-blowing to me. So you have many different kinds of Logos. You have the black hole, or the entire galaxy, is one living, thinking entity. And then the, the black hole at the beginning creates stars. How are stars created? Have we studied how that happens? How, do they, how are they created? And how are they so perfectly spaced in the way they are? Have we ever asked that question? I mean, there's lots of different versions and variations in the universe. But it seems so convenient that all of them are spaced in such a way. It's very... It's wonderful. The idea of it. It's a gigantic playground. And it's like the sun is also a Logos. And the sun gets to create its own solar system. All of the planets, the way that they rotate, what they all mean, they all have meanings. And they are part of the, of the solar system itself. And each planet can create life. And each life form becomes its own Logos. It's amazing and a beautiful thing to look up at the sun and know that it's a real version of God that you're looking at right there that created the solar system and that we're standing on a planet that is that is that has created us and so that we can see that there's many different versions of God and God breaks itself up and each part of it is moving slowly to that oneness so when the sun becomes a black hole is when it truly connects to God that's the point which it moves its density to its highest and then what happens a black hole begins to form a galaxy each black hole can form an, another entire universe on the other side so in physics what we're finding and what they're theorizing is that we may exist on the other side of a black hole and so imagine the possibility that every black hole behind it is an entire universe just like ours and so there's a real possibility that consciousness is moving from the most basic form up through these different densities and so we'll explain the idea but the, the Logos creates many sub logoi star systems stars and planets and that one sub Logos would be our sun and another would be our planet. Another would be planet, Venus, Jupiter, and so on. And the sub-logi in turn create sub-sub-logi. Human beings are an example of sub-sub-logi. Each logos, sub-logos, and sub-sub-logos is a microcosm of the creator. The logos creates seven levels of progression for spiritual evolution. And Ra has called each of these levels a density. Even more importantly, this cosmology is not simply in the realm of lofty speculation. For all intents and purposes, Ra was systematically teaching Dr. Elkins about a whole new form of physics, a new form of understanding the way that the universe functions, rooted in compassion, harmony, and wisdom. So the commentators talked about densities, and they have interpreted densities in a variety of ways. Check out my interview with Aaron Apke, where we talk about the law of one, and he gives a pretty good explanation of the density. Some have described it as a density as in a higher dimension of experiential reality. A density differs markedly from the Cartesian notion of dimension, but the description of a density as a dimension as utilized in other sources is problematic, especially due to the fact that books have occasionally used the term dimension interchangeably with density. Some have described it as a physical concept in addition to a non-physical concept, while others describe it as an entirely non-physical. In any case, all commentators agree that different densities are associated with different levels, forms of consciousness, and different phenomenological ways of being. So the first density is the density of the elements, earth, water, air, fire, so in scientific terms, solids, liquids, gases, and plasma, the second density is the density of organic life, plants, animals, bacteria. As second density moves, you, you start to get an, animals that, that start to create an ego, like the dogs, 
and different a- animals, that's where they're moving up to a third density. Third density is the density of which a human being inhib- inhabits. It is the density of self-awareness, of being aware of yourself. It is also the density of duality through which the individual chooses the polarity of service. The negative polarity or the positive polarity. And we are in a third density right now. The fourth density is the density of love or understanding. And like all subsequent densities is inhabited by mind-body-spirit complexes of a higher level of spiritual evolution than human beings on present day earth. The fifth density is the density of light or wisdom where in long and deep contemplation and introspection are practiced so that one's own wisdom may spring forth and the entity may become refined to an even higher degree. And the sixth density is the density of unity consciousness where love and wisdom are united, where all other polarities are united. In earth history, it is from this density that archangels come from as described in various texts. The seventh density is the gateway density, the the last density before mind-body-spirit complexes merge back into the Creator. The eighth density is the beginning of the next octave, where the journey begins again. Ra tells us that humans are composed of a mind, a body, and a spirit, and therefore would refer to an individual as a mind-body-spirit complex. And he says, or her, or it, says that humans along with the earth are going through a process called harvest. This included statements that there are many other living beings in the universe that are similar to humans but differ in body, intelligence, culture, and spiritual evolution. And these beings, like humans, are referred to as mind-body-spirit complexes. Ra describes that individuals from other densities have incarnated on earth to contribute to the harvest. Ra expressed that all mind-body-spirit complexes, after being formed in third density, progress upward through the densities as they evolve spiritually until they become one with the Creator at the end of seventh density. This evolution is accomplished through incarnation into a body, and many times until the soul has completed the lessons relevant to each density, incarnation only occurs within first, second, third, and fourth density. A physical body is no longer necessary beyond the end of the fourth density. From the fifth density and beyond, the body is purely energetic in nature. In order to progress from third to fourth density, individuals must make a choice between two polarities of service, service to others or service to self, or in ordinary language, between altruism and selfishness. The purpose of third density is to make this choice. The purpose of experiencing the sometimes harsh environment of third density, no matter which location in the universe, is for each soul to make this choice of service and thus progress. As entities evolve, they progressively balance and unblock their energy centers, which directly corresponds to chakras. The Law of One series includes an extensive discussion of these energy centers. So each energy center is, is associated with a color and a corresponding Hindu chakra. So the Muladhara is the red ray, the Svaritsvana is the orange ray, the Manapura is the yellow ray, the Anahata is the green ray, the Vishuddhi is called the blue ray, the Ajna or the third eye is called the indigo ray, and the Sahasra is the violet ray, which is the crown chakra. Additionally to this, humanity and earth are undergoing a transition from third density to fourth density. This transition is linked to a process they call harvest. This involves a quantum leap within our physical reality said to occur approximately 30 years from the time, which was 1981. One of the dialogues mentions a general time frame of 100 to 700 years for transition on earth from third to fourth density. Moral choices are discussed through the concept of polarity. Ra explains that there are two polarities service to self and service to others, and that these two polarities approximate relate relate to the everyday concepts known as evil and good or selfishness and altruism. Service to others is described in terms of an energy center configuration where the green ray center radiates out towards other beings, and this results in compassion, love, feelings, and acts of service towards others. 
Then there's the service to self as described in terms of an energy center configuration where the green ray center is pointed pointed mainly inward. This energy center configuration causes the entity to feel love for itself but not for others. These feelings lead to surf self-serving intentions and actions or self service to self rob views the earth as a living being that has a mind free will and grows over time both physically and spiritually and Ra explains that the earth is currently in the process of changing from third density to fourth density uh, to me it, this kind of sounds like a, a virtual reality revolution doesn't it <laughs> so uh, one of the things that Ra talks about is the tarot. A big part of the series covers the study of local Logos archetypes, which is a high, highly reminiscent of the work of Carl Jung. Ra states that tarot system originates from Ra's home planet, Venus, when Ra's civilization was at third density level long ago, and that the major arcana of the tarot was used as a general referent and means of studying one's own progress. I have never really gotten into the tarot. Uh, it's not ever been my thing. If it is yours, uh, there's de- been different times that I've studied it. But originally, the major arcana was just a, a conglomerate of archetypal images that were supposed to be memorized. It is only later, when it introduced to Sumerian and Egyptian civilizations, that the tarot system came to get settled into the card format it is today. The archetypes are divided into three groups mind, body, spirit of seven, 36, with the 22nd archetype being the same as the zeroth, which Ra calls the choice. The book series centers around the harvest, which is described as a major spiritual and physical change that will occur on earth around the year 2011. A lot of people say that we went through a shift in 2012. Did you notice a shift in the way that you were thinking and the way that the world started changing in around 2012? We've gone through about seven years of craziness. Consider year of channeling session where harvest is mentioned whilst adding 30 years that is this inconvenience imminent within a few years uh, and ross said this inconvenience or disharmonious vibratory complex has begun several years in the past it shall continue unabated for a period of three or 30 of your years so ross explaining that we're going through this change right now this inconvenience or disharmonious vibratory complex has begun several of your years in the past. So it's we've been going through it. So the law of one book series has influenced many published authors in various fields. You'll hear references to it all the time. I hear Aaron Doty and so many other people make reference to these concepts as if you have already read about it, talking about densities and talking about Wanderers, the, there's an explanation of wanderers. Well, uh, there are people in the fourth density that come back to third density and choose to incarnate in third density to, to propel us back into the fourth density. There's co- commentary about Jesus, who is referred to as Yeheshua, which was his original name, choosing to incarnate on the earth and choosing to become a martyr still going through the path he's in fifth density and implies that he did come back when he channeled and so there's a possibility that there's a confirmation of the course of miracles in the in the book also they ask about urantia that crazy if you ever read urantia it's this phenomenal book that describes the universe but there's something about it and ross says that was that was created by a, an entity spirit on earth So, uh, another interesting aspect is that there is different alien races that are mentioned in the book, such as Sirius, Pleiades, and Orion, and they all have different means. The question is, how do they travel faster than the speed of light? According to Ra, they travel in several different ways. For instance, the ones from Pleiades travel and they can freeze their bodies and travel for long distances and then unfreeze so they can travel slow slower than the speed of light then some species have learned of a way of using the speed of light that kind of whips them forward faster than the speed of light is the best that they explained it and then the, the third is if you're in sixth density you can travel to any part of the universe instantaneously 
which in, is in what I think is happening is when we're entering into our and some people are able when they go and have an out of body experience they can enter into that sixth density realm where you can travel anywhere in a thought but the idea is it's just fascinating to consider the universe and if you get a chance go and read Frederick Dotson's Pleiades and Our Secret Destiny. He's never read The Law of One. I asked him in our discussion of Pleiades and these different alien races, but there's some interesting commentary. Orion is a negative polarity alien group that has been manipulating us for a long time, according to Ra. I'm not telling you if this stuff is true. I'm just giving you this information so that you can have it. And so there are things like the, the Ten Commandments were given by the people of Orion because God would not say thou shalt not according to the law of one. There is a confederation of planets in the book that is mentioned of 650 planets that are in union in in agreement to the law of one. And our planet is being protected, currently being covered and protected. Orion is secretly attacking it and that's one reason we can't find aliens. It's the answer to the Fermi's paradox. It's because these are these aliens are so advanced. They're so aware of what's going on on Earth. There is a literal thought war happening. And only five planets participate at any given time. It really fascinates me, this concept. This large concept. It reminds me in many ways of Ian Banks the culture series there's several books in a wonderful series one of my favorite authors ian banks and it's the most advanced it's more far more advanced than the federation it's these huge starships which are even more popular than planets and people they never die they switch bodies and these starships are alive and there's converse there's several um books there's two of them in fact where the majority of the plot takes up with these large starships that are that are multidimensionally and infinitely smarter than anything that you can imagine having discussions and so you start to imagine these ideas that galaxies can be communicating with each other suns can communicate with each other and according to the to ra when they do these experiments what happens is that the information is spread throughout like an internet of all the suns and they all know in the galaxy. And so what's happening is we're like a laboratory for all, and all the other the rest of the universe is watching us as we grow and evolve. According to Ra, which is coming from Venus, they did not have opposable thumbs on Venus. And so because of that, these the species on Venus grew in love and rapidly moved to a higher density. What happened on Mars is they had opposable thumbs, they developed tools, and they had war, and they destroyed their planet. If that's true or not, it's still fascinating to think about that there are planets in our solar system that may have had alien species that lived on it millions of years beforehand. We have no way of knowing the arrangements of of life and how how it works, but it's a fascinating concept. It reminds me, one of my favorite... (laughs) books is uh, The End of Eternity by Robert Sawyer and the idea they travel back in time to the time of the dinosaurs but the dinosaurs it turns out are actually just weapons of war and these slimy little aliens inhabit the, the dinosaurs like a tank and they're in this battle with this uh the, pla- the the dinosaurs are in some kind of battle with Mars and they wage a huge battle and they blow up a planet which ends up being the asteroid belt that we have today <laughs> I'm not saying that that's real I'm just it reminds me what kind of stuff has happened in our universe and according to Ra there are several planets right now that have a, that have life that are developing through these densities right now which planet Wouldn't it be fun to know what planet in our system also has life? And if we ever make contact, and what kind of contact will we make at some point when we make contact? You know what's interesting? There's so much on TV now about the military witnessing alien craft coming in. 
Uh, there's the, the video of the Tic Tac. Go watch Joe Rogan. There's been some videos that have been amazing lately in the military saying, it's okay, we, these objects are identified. We want to know more. When in the past, people may not have reported objects like this because of concern that they would be called crazy. Rod talks about several species have shown that uh, to open up the idea of the infinite in our minds. So there's a real possibility that we are going through multiple incarnations and moving up through densities eternally in this beautiful path, moving up through different points of awareness, all a part of one thought, all being one energy all being one there's a bunch of really interesting things that are mentioned for instance the majority of the path goes the right way there is no hell the majority of people go on the positive path in order to 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 end up leaving life and moving to the negative path you have to be so negative so bad like 95 percent of your actions are on the negative polarity and according to Ra, only two people not Hitler, Genghis Khan, and um, one other person um, in in Russia uh, also was so bad. And historically, these two people ended up <laughs> going to hell. So uh, the power of love is this overwhelming power that, that always wins every time. And so the path to self for the negative path is a very lonely and long path. So it's an interesting concept to think about. According to this, there's several wanderers that have come to the earth to push us along this path. So when people talk about the star seeds, it could be something as simple as that. I don't know, but do you ever have memories of your past or previous lives or what you've done or been through? I have a past life regression hypnosis on this channel. I created it for that reason because I think you can get information from these past lives. And I've definitely figured that into many of my meditations. But I'm inspired to do a giant grand meditation related to the law of one. But in order to do that, I wanted to give you this information and give you some background so you knew a little bit about it and so that you could check it out. So. If you want further discussion of the law of one, I can go deeper because they talk about everything from Bigfoot to different UFO encounters and even is mentioned in there that Eisenhower at one point was encountered with different aliens and he agreed that we weren't ready. All kinds of interesting information is in there and it may be completely ridiculous, an incredibly creative mind. But if you listen to the tapes, you can listen to the tapes of what's going on it just would be clearly impossible for her to be giving the information in that matter and if she did and it wasn't real then that's an even more phenomenal accomplishment because the genuine reality of it this was documented she was in a trance state you never know but the information is fun to think about and if it's true it's interesting to think about what has influenced us in our past that we have influences and we're going through this big transition you can feel it we, there's a duality in our lives right now there's a duality of self and altruism but in our politics and everything that we do and you can see this, this duality playing out on the world stage right in front of us you can see us going through this shifting transition and we can create a positive transition and we can move to a, a positive transition of love and light if we work together to give this energy of positivity of love for the entire planet to lock into the grid of this planet and we can do it we have the ability to raise the consciousness of this planet on such a level that we can be a wonderful part of the cosmic community on this path So these are just interesting things to think about. And that's just a beginning ex summary of what's going on with the law of one. If you wanted to understand it, I, I thought that I owed you this simply because I talked about it so much in the episode with Aaron Abke and I hadn't really mentioned it before. So 
we can consider this just a further explanation of what was what was being talked about in that. But uh, you can listen to it. There's there's several places that have uh, better, different versions of it. But check those out. Look it up. And there's further discussion. Check out Aaron's videos on that. And let me know what you think in the comments to this video or this podcast. Let me know what you think. Is it true? What does it feel like? Wouldn't it be cool if it is? And are we going through this reality revolution? Are we moving through a new density in reality? Doesn't it feel like your reality is becoming more manifest every day? Your powers are increasing every day. The world around us is becoming less and less real and more like the matrix that we thought it is. And we're starting to have this power. We're gaining in power and we can feel it. And I'm wondering if you feel this shift that's happening right now that we're going through in this moment right now. So let me know if you would like to have further episodes where we go deeper on this topic and I'll be happy to look into it and and give you more episodes. It's always a pleasure when you join me on these excursions into the infinite. And it's also wonderful to think about all of the infinite possibilities that are before us, to consider them as objective observers, to acquire this information and go through our spiritual path, not being afraid of information that we receive, but simply judging this not objectively and opening ourselves to all the possibilities around us. For all episodes of The Reality Revolution, you can go to therealityrevolution.com. For coaching, go to advancedsuccessinstitute.com. Welcome to the reality revolution.